Hello? You're still live, I, I presume, right? Yes, we are live. Are you almost there, my friend? Well, I I don't really have an answer for that, to be honest. I was raised one. Okay, so you are a Muslim, but you don't know if you are a Muslim. So what I was, what I was saying, you are a Muslim or not? I'm not sure. Okay, so... What I'm sure of is yeah. what, when you were talking about the devil um, um, urinating in people's noses and, and mouths and ears, and that, that stuff used to scare me so much as a child. And to be honest, I was listening to you for years now. And All right. I just had the courage to talk to you today, to be honest. All right. So is, like, does that mean you like you are confused about Islam because you are listening to me? I'm not confused. I think it's it's a cult. I okay. So, do. but let me be there and change the question. Like, did you come to the conclusion Islam is a cult because you listened to me for years? Many reasons. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm a woman myself. I am a mother of women, right. of, of girls as well. Okay. And I don't think... All these things and, 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 and going to heaven to be a sex slave is not something I want for myself or my daughters. I you understand. Know? All right. So, and, so and why you don't say I am out of Islam? I mean, why you are confused still? I mean, if you don't want to be a sex slave as a, no, as a female, then just denounce Muhammad and say, okay, Muhammad, obviously, he is a devilish person. He is satanic. I have I, I've denounced Muhammad a long time ago. Oh, okay. That's good. Him, yes. Then you should not say, you should not say, I'm not sure, you know, when I ask you, you should say, okay, I'm not a Muslim no more. I lived. Yeah. All right. But I wanted to ask you about this, the, the right hands, because you were discussing the two right hands of God. Mm. And and that also is, is it's, it's written in the Quran. Every Muslim believes that God only has right side. And I don't understand, is he disabled according to, to Islam? You see, uh, uh, I, I like for me, I can take it uh, in different measure. I say, okay, you know what? The right side present the right direction. You know, always the word right present right. Left mm -hmm. present in, a, in the in the manner of religion. The word right present the, the right path, the right uh, belief, the right uh, way. You know, and the left is the wrong one. So I can take it this way, no problem. But this is God, you see. But that's not how they say it. They literally say his right hand and his, and his fingers in his right hand and his leg that he puts in hell. And it's just so, and the way they speak about an, an almighty that I'm supposed to love, it, the, the Quran is actually, okay, I have this fear of not calling it the book of God, but at the same time when I read it, I'm thinking it's demeaning God so much. Yeah, well, you know, this is not a book of God for many reasons, not because right and left. I mean, the whole Quran is, is, is wrong. The whole yes. story is wrong. I mean, from the beginning, from the first page to the last page, I always, I change the Muslims. You call me and tell me any chapter you want, and I will find you tons of mistakes in any chapter you choose. For me, the most the most aggressive thing is, is the hate of everybody and the hate of the women who are already Muslims. Yeah, There's like when Muhammad, hate. he said, that a woman, she ad she advanced in the image of shaitan and she live in the image of shaitan. Why? What she did? A woman, she walked by in the front of his house and Muhammad got horny. He went to his wife. He had sex with her. He forced her into sex, even so she is working. She was tanning leather. So imagine a woman, she is sweating. She is boiling water, putting leather. And now, 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 now he want to have sex. And even Muhammad, he says that the angels will curse the women if her husband, he asked her to come to bed and she refused, even if he asked her to do it in the top of a saddle of a camel. So this man is very sexual, you know, and he, he, he abused women. And because what he cared for is the men who want to fight for him. Women, they are followers. They are not leaders at that yeah. time, at least. So uh, all what he cared for, how he can make them, the, the men, uh, uh, like what he say. So now I will give you the power over women. You can beat them. You can, you know, you can uh, have many of them. You can insult them. You can torture them. And the Muslim, they, they lie. They say, the Prophet says, beat them lightly. But no, we, no. But, but I, we, I, witnessed, I witnessed women in, in our culture being beaten, and it is not lightly. I've, it is not lightly. I have, I have, I know a person that lost her eyes through a beating, both her eyes. Yeah, I, we, actually, we have a story from the from the uh, uh, Sahih Hadith that a woman she came to Aisha, 
and her clothing uh, was green and her skin was greener than her clothing from beating in the time of Muhammad what Muhammad did he took the side of the man and he never even questioned the man why even you beat her severely like this he took his side and actually he gave him a verse says your women are you are in charge of women so beat them you know uh, uh, like admonish them jail them in their rooms and beat them and uh, the the story in front of us in Sahih Bukhari hadith number uh, uh, 42 book number 77 so the story clearly Aisha she said uh, that the woman she was a lady she came to uh, wearing a green veil and she complained to her to Aisha and she showed her beating she showed her skin caused by beating and it was saying here she saw her spot green spot in her skin it was a habit, look how the Muslim explained how, how the women support each other, supposedly. It was the habit of ladies to support each other. This is not because the man is bad, no, no, no. But this is because ladies support each other. So when Allah Messenger came, Aisha, she said, I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman. Can Muslim, they say, that Aisha, she is a liar? No. According to this, the most suffering women is Muslim woman. She continues saying, look, her skin is a greener than her clothes. And then you read the rest of the story, you will see Muhammad taking the side of the man against the woman. Always. The thing is that that was a turning point for me is also Aisha is, is guilty in that sense. Um, the rape of Zainab, uh, of, of the rabbi's daughter. Um, that was that was a horrific story for me. And they, they tell it as, as if it's a, an accomplishment. You just killed her father and brother and husband. Yeah, you're talking about Safiya. Safiya, yes. Um, and I didn't see any of his wife come to defend her or any of the men. And then this well, happened. You know, he and... killed all her tribes and then she became his sex slaves. So what she can do, everyone. And those women, um, those women at the end of the day, they knew that this guy is a beast. You know, anyone who go against him, he would end dead. Who, you know, who there? That was literally the turning point for me. And, and, these kind of stories that like the one you were telling when they go to heaven an endless um organ yeah who needs that i i it, it makes no sense in in a human mind who needs that why would you want to look like that why would you want why would i want to go to heaven where i don't see my husband for 70 plus years and when he comes back to me i'm only there for that reason and then again 70 plus years what what do i do there what do I exactly do there? Well, not What's 70, that? actually. You will stay, uh, when, a, when a husband, he sleep with his wife, you will stay for a couple of thousand of years until you return, come back again. Because, you see, when the Muslim, they speak about 72 women, 72 women, each one of them have 72 maids. And each maid, she have 72, etc. So, like, you know, so the number increase, like, you know, like uh, double and double and double and double and 70 times. So, you will end with thousands of women and the man. And then... If you calculate even the Muhammad, he says that the man in heaven, his orgasm will take 70 years, just the orgasm alone. That will kill him. That's phys physiology. That's not, you know, who care about killing him. But it, I mean, but, but you notice here how much sexuality is yes. very focused in this religion because it is a sex cult, you know? This is, this is for me, this is why I called you because I needed confirmation that I'm not like in my head, I'm an educated woman. I'm, I'm, I'm in my head. I'm thinking this does not make sense, and I don't want to go to that heaven. But it, it, I want a heaven to go to because I, I grew up believing so it. So, what do you do think about that. Christianity? As long you know, like now you agree with me that Muhammad is a fraud. What do you think about Jesus then? I have, um, I don't, I've never heard a bad story about him. He, he's never sexualized a woman like that, and actually, and he Jesus, believed, Jesus, not only. You know, Jesus, he was out of his time because we are talking about 2,000 years ago, you know, how oh, all yeah. those women is looked down at, you know, in every society, especially in the Middle East. So, uh, but Jesus, he did not do that. Actually, only in Christianity, Christians, they have a unique story about Jesus that he himself, who is our Lord, is born of a woman. Born of a woman. So how yeah. much honor a woman she can have in anywhere, you know, you will not see any Christian can dare to uh, like disrespect Mary, but Mary is a woman. At the end of the day, she's a woman. She is not God. She's a woman. So if God himself, he chose 
to be born of a woman, then what's wrong with the women? And Jesus himself, when he spoke about the women, he forbid the, 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 the Christians, the one who listened to him, that if you want to marry, you marry only one woman. Why you want to have two and three and four? And divorce became very hard because divorce became a joke for many. And like now, people, they get divorced in two seconds. I mean, in Islam is the same. Islam actually was advanced in divorce before any other cult and any other, uh, you know, religion, uh, pagan religion, because Islam make divorce just one statement, one word. You know, the guy, he said, you're divorced, that's it, you're done. And yeah, that's, that's ruined a lot of families. Yeah. Um, I've seen so Jesus, he made that, you know, very hard. Divorce is very hard. And I, I, if you do a little search in, you know, uh, about it, you will see how difficult for Christians to get divorced uh, if they are following the Bible. If they are not, uh, divorce is so easy. And second, you are not following. That's mean you can do anything you want. So in Christianity, even when they ask Jesus about uh, what what the women, what the man will have in heaven, like you know, this, this woman she married this guy and that guy and that guy. When she die, who is going to have her? So the Jews they are thinking about her as an inheritance, you know, even in heaven. So Jesus, he said, he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. So in heaven, you and me, we will be equal. It doesn't matter if you are male or a female. I will not get reward more than you, and you will not get re reward less than me. Your gender is not the reason for you how to be rewarded. So uh, uh, with Christ, you know, women is respected. Women have a value. Even, uh, even Jesus, he said, that when the man he get married, he leave his parents and he become one with his wife, one. So in a Christ, you have a marriage. Your marriage is unity, is not is not a contract of sex like Muslims. You know? So Yeah, that also that also broke my heart knowing that my, my contract to my ex husband was not contract of marriage, it was contract of the act. It is no marriage. In Islam, there is no marriage. Right? It was it was aqd and nikah. Yes, I, yes, yes. It broke my heart because it yeah, just made me feel like like a prostitute, in a sense. Exactly. With a contract. Yeah. Well, um, you know, it's, uh, this is what uh, this religion is. Uh, if we can call it a religion. It is, uh, and the reason it is very sexual, uh, because in Muhammad, he is trying to attract the customers who they are men, you know? men yeah yeah and uh, uh he want uh, he want fighters he don't want uh, disciples like uh, preach peace and love and mercy you know uh, jesus said love your enemy you do not you do not need the criminals you know even even his just to understand what kind of companion he have they accuse even their prophet that he stole an underwear what i did not know that yeah like you know if you go in the quran it says uh, uh, Linabian and Yagul, Yagul mean to steal, to be a thief. So right. imagine, uh, 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 you know, imagine you have a you have the highest person in the world as uh, ethic, you know, ethics. Suppose most of them they say that, right? They say that Muhammad is the most uh, noble man in the world. Yes. Yeah. But then we found that the Muslims accusing their prophet that he stole an underwear, and this underwear is stolen. They themselves, they stole it. They attack people. They took their, 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 their stuff, their furniture, their clothing, their animals, and now they are fighting over the theft. So if you go in the Quran, in chapter 3, verse number 161, it says, it is not for any prophet to embezzle. Who is so embezzles will bring what he embezzles with him in the day of resurrection. So, that was over an underwear? Huh? This um, verse, was it over an underwear? Yeah, the Muslim, they say over a piece of a, of a velvet, red velvet. I see. But it's an, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a piece of clothes, whatever it is, you know, underwear, socks, panty, I don't know, you know, but it's, it's, a, it's an, a disclose, you know. But here you ask yourself, Imagine John or Peter accusing Jesus that he stole socks. No, no, <laughs> it never happened. I've never heard. Of you know that would be hilarious, isn't it? But this is telling us the quality. 
You know what's more hilarious is that the Almighty would talk about that in in a Quran that we're supposed to be reciting to the end of days. Why would he even interfere in such? No, not only. Little... Look at look how silly this verse. They are accusing him that he took the panty. Shouldn't Allah he say who took it? Right. You know. Absolutely. Like, if you watch, uh, if you watch uh, Detective, what's his name? This guy, funny guy, the short guy, uh, Columbus, Columbus. Like when he's leaving from the door, he said one more, one, one, one more thing, you know. So what is Allah here, the, the, the Columbus? I mean, come on, they accuse the prophet that he stole the underwear. Allah is all knowing. This is what the Muslim they say. You know the unseen. Why Allah did not tell who took the panty? Actually, this verse confirmed that the one who took it is Muhammad. Because he could but, not tell us his God. Supposedly the one is talking is Allah, not Muhammad. So if Muslim they say, well, Muhammad do not know who took it. He's a human, but the one is talking here is Allah. Shouldn't Allah say, is okay, you know what? You accuse my prophet falsely. Go to the end, go to the drawer of this guy to his bedroom, or let this guy take off his pant, and you will see the clothes there. Can't you do that? He could not, of course. because simply the one who took it for real is Muhammad, and and, and Columbus is way smarter than Allah. This verse confirm that Muhammad is the thief, not the opposite. And confirm the other, other thing, the quality of the companion, because what kind of companion? I mean, aren't you ashamed to accuse your prophet that he stole it? What kind what kind of gang he have? You know, like you, you watch those movies like a bunch of a drunken pirate, you know, the part of the Caribbean. They have no dignity. They have no ethical. They are pirate. And this is telling us that Muhammad and his companion, they have no dignity and they are just a bunch of pirates. And not only that, actually the Muslim, they agree that Muhammad was a pirate. If you go and search on the internet, you will see how they call it Ghazwa. How many yes, times Muhammad did Ghazwa? You will see how many. Ghazwa, what they do? They attack the caravan of people in the street and they steal their, 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 their clothes, their, their stuff, their animals, their money. That's right. Yeah. However, Muslims, um, you know, um, admire the Sahaba, the, the companions, sometimes more than the Prophet himself. Like the way they speak about Omar, for example, much more. Um, yeah, you know, Omar he killed uh, he killed Fatima and he caused her to have uh, this courage, you know, and yet they they still worship Omar, the, the Sunni. More than more than Muhammad, yes. Yeah, yeah. But let me ask you, you know, as long as you agree with me that Islam is really false, and you yes. agree that Jesus, there is nothing negative about him. What do you think about? Jesus as Lord, as Savior for you. If there's a questions for you, I can help you with. For me, I, I I don't know what can give me a heaven that I'm pleased with. What Because I've been calling God Allah the whole time. And for me, Allah, honestly, it means Al-Ilah. But I've been listening to you as well, saying that, no, it is the moon God. And I've known, for example, my grandmother was Christian. My grandmother was Catholic, right? Mm. And I've heard her say Allah as mm. to to talk about God. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, what am I gonna call God now? And yeah. Let me let me explain to you. You see, your grandmother, she is I can tell you speak Arabic, correct? Yes, I do. All right. So your grandmother, she's an Arab, they live between the Arab and they are using the same word the Arab using, but Allah is not our God. We cannot find the word Allah in in, in the Bible anywhere. You can find the word Ilah, the one you mentioned, but Ilah, let me put it in the screen just to show you so we can understand the language together. If we go, I will make a white screen here. Let us see. All right. uh, I don't know if you can see my screen now. You can look. Okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, the, the Aramaic is the origin language of everything in Arabic. There's nothing that's called Arabic, actually. Arabic is not even a language by itself. Even though now look look like it, but if you go in details, you will find there's no Arabic in the Arabic. But if you if we try to write the word uh, al ilah, al, yeah. you know, al in Arabic when we say al usually it means that, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. And then it is ilah. Yeah. Okay. And there is a sound which is h. But this is yeah. not really part of the word. It's like, uh, you know, to give a tone. So, il is the word which is used for God in the Aramaic language. And However, in Hebrew, yeah. And in Hebrew, yeah. The origin is Aramaic, even from the Hebrew, even the Hebrew. Remember, Abraham is the father of who? Of the Jews, correct? Absolutely. And yes. Abraham came from where? 
from the land yeah. of the Aramaic speaking people, correct? That's right. So Arab. it's normal that he is using Aramaic language. So Il is the new actually Hebrew, the original Hebrew or the older, it was Al. So Israel was not Israel, it was Israel. Al. Al means God. Al is a word meaning God. It's not a name of God. Same as Il. Mm -hmm. It's not a name of God. It's a word. It can be used even for any God, you know, like Il, God, God. Like now, in English you say God. A Hindu person, he say the same word God. Uh, uh, a person who worship maybe stars, he call them God. So it's a word. Il, Al is God. This is why we say Baal. You know, Baal. Baal, Al. You know, he is God. God, uh, uh, this God. Uh, have nothing to do with us. He is the God of fertility. So, Al is a is a word meaning God, and Allah. If you ask any Muslim, and you used to be a Muslim, and your mm -hmm. family are Muslims, Allah is a name, is not a word meaning God. Do we agree? Yes, and um, yes, I I agree. But at the same time, whenever I ask that question, even when I was little, um, so how did Al Ilah become Allah? And then they're like, no, 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 it just means the God. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so what's his name then? Because okay. Allah has attributes. Yeah, let, me, let me explain to you. You see, Allah is not the same as Al-Ilah. If you go to chapter 2, chapter yeah. 2, sorry, chapter 1, verse number 2, and as long as you speak Arabic, it says, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, correct? Yeah. So what we have, we have Li and we have Lah, not Ilah. Yeah. So the confusion happening because you are mixing between Ila, il, and la. So la. what's la? La is the name of the God. La is the moon God. We can search it right oh. now in Google. So even in the Quran it says, like if I go right now, let me see in in the, in the Muslim website, they have a way, uh, like you know, like you can pronounce in English the, the letters, uh, what they call it. Let us see, translation. I think translation. Yeah, let us see the translation. How it's going to be? All right. Uh, yeah, this is a funny translation. Let us see the other one, number two. Ah. See, this is the Muslims. They are breaking the word from Arabic into uh, Latin letters. So, Alhamdu, Alhamdu, Li, Li mean two. And then they say, Lahi. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, those tashkil, they are added later. There's nothing that's called tashkil in the Quran. Like lahi, this is a tashkil, this is not a letter. So we have to take it only lah. So, alhamdulillah, lah. Li mean to, what is it? To who? To lah. Not to ilah. Huh? And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Okay, he is the, he is the, he is the, uh, the Lord of, uh, Rabb is an, is an Aramaic word too. Even the Hebrew use it too, which means like rabbi, master, you know, rabbi. Yeah. Uh, so, alhamdulillah, and thanks to la, the Lord or the master of the two worlds. Okay. Who is la? It's not Allah now, you see. The word in the top, it says, bism li la. Do you see it? This is the Muslim trying to teach you how to pronounce it. But for you, you speak Arabic, do not need it. But just for people to see, so uh, uh, in, in the first one in Arabic, it says here, Bismillah, and the, uh, Allah is written differently. There is Alif, there is letter A in the beginning. Here, the letter is gone. There is no letter in the second one. If we zoom, you will see there is different between them. There is one letter missing in the beginning. Do the people that wrote this, do they know this? Like no, the no, you, see, and... you see, the, the Quran, obviously, never was in Arabic. Quran is not an Arabic book. There is somebody, he made this book, trying to make it as it is today, but the original Quran cannot be in Arabic. And there's many, many proof of that, you know. Uh, but this is more complicated. Actually, I will, I will, I will speak about that in my coming book, uh, okay. which is going to be very, very good for many people to, to earn a lot of information about uh, how, how uh, Islam is born and born of what. Uh, but if we focus here with us, you are focusing in the name of God, right? Yeah. But the name for me is not important. You see, when God, he, uh, when Moses, he asked God in the Bible, he says to him, 
what I will call you, what I will tell my 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 people, you know, okay, you are God, you are my creator. Uh, so what I will tell you, what I will tell them, you know. So he said to him, I am who I am. God did not give him give a name. And even though the Bible used it as a name, like in the Christian, they say to you, well, this word is a name, the name of God. This is how a God he presents himself to. Uh, if you go to Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, so I am who I am. But uh, uh, because people read it in the, in, the, in the foreign language, which is the Hebrew, they think it's really a name, but it's not really a name. God is telling us that he is the one who is exist without anyone to make him exist. I am the one who exists by myself. So I am who I am, but we don't follow a name. We follow God. We don't follow a name because anyone can claim the name. And that's mean he is God. Like now, when we say uh, we believe in Jesus, right? But if you go to uh, Mexico, you will find people, they call themselves Jesus. Right? Yeah, that's It's true. a popular name. Jesus. So does that mean we worship them? No, we don't follow the name. We follow the person, the name, we don't follow. And the name of the Messiah, the, the, the real name, is Yeshua. But we don't care really for the name as much we care for the person. The name is how he identify between the people he was with. But mm -hmm. the one we follow is the Messiah who did all those things, who came in the time of those disciples, not the name. Because the Lord, he says to us, many, many false teachers will come. Be aware, you know, of false teachers. They will come to you in the clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. So they can take the name. And there is many actually came after the Messiah, and they claim to be the Messiah. Many. Maybe hundreds, maybe not, maybe thousands. We do not know how many. So until now, like even now, I think there's somebody who claimed that he is the Messiah. So uh, there is Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. He claimed to be the yes. Messiah, correct? So yes. we do not need uh, to, to focus on the name as much we focus in the person. So let us say the Muslim, they change the name of their God. And they call him Yahweh or Yahweh. But that will not make their God our God. It's not the name. Imagine, uh, like... You have, uh, uh, you know, a car made in France, a big job. And then you put the Mercedes Benz on your car, but it doesn't make your car Mercedes, correct? No, it does not. Yeah. It's that so <clears throat> Muslims, they stole many names. <clears throat> sorry, my voice. <clears throat> so the Muslims, they stole many voice, many, sorry, many, many names. And they put them in their book, but still their religion is not ours and their God is not ours, even though they say, we believe in Mary, it will go, they have Mary, we have Mary too. But yes. obviously it's not the same Mary. In the Quran, Mary, she is the daughter of Amran. Who is Amran? It's not. <laughs> she yeah. is the sister of Aaron, and she is the sister of Moses. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's it's a messed up. And, uh, you know, the God of the Bible from the beginning, if you go from the beginning of the Bible, you see God in his spirit. So from the first verses in the Bible, it says that God, he have a spirit. The Muslims, they deny that God is a spirit. But the Jews and the Christians, they agree that, yes, God is a spirit. So uh, we, what we care for is not the name. However, I reject to use the name because the name of the God of Islam is proving to be the moon God. Even though the Quran says, don't worship the moon. But the moon is God is not worshiping the moon. It's the moon God, not the moon. You know what I mean? So wow. if I say the God of the earth does not mean we worship the earth. That's right. It's like it's like Greek mythology, a god yeah. of something. So if I say the the, the, the god of uh, the god of sex doesn't mean we worship sex. He's god of sex, you know. Mm -hmm. He's god of sex. So he is the one in control of something. So the god, this god, the Muslim they worship, they stole the name from ancient language, and if we search it, we will find in two seconds that La is the moon god. And not only that, <clears throat> you know that a Muslim they go to the Kaaba, correct? That's right, yeah. And I hated Kaaba, that place. Yeah. And verses as a kid. I don't know why. You I went, never you, liked... did, did you go to the Kaaba yourself? Yeah. They okay. took they took me. Um I was a kid. I hated it. I hated the crowdedness. I hated the noise. I hated the um aimless running of grown ups <laughs> that means nothing. Yeah. And and how I, dirty it is. If you look at yes. the pictures in Mecca you will see how dirty the city. You I know? never belonged. I very savage, I very belonged. savage. Yeah, but I, I want to talk about here something important. Okay. You know, in, in the Kaaba, there is something called Ar-Ruknul Yamani. 
the yes. Yemeni the Yemeni corner. Let us put it in the yes. screen so people they can see it. If you ask the Muslims what the Yemeni corner, Yemeni mean the corner of Yemen. Okay. That's right. Why it's called your corner of Yemen? Uh, the Muslims they start giving you ideas like uh, maybe it's facing you on. But in fact, the reason for this corner to be called a Ruknul Yemen, Yemeni, because simply those stones who look different, they are taken from the temple of Al Makkah from Yemen. Al Makkah is the same name of Mecca. In the language of Yemen, the Ka is pronounced as Qa. So That's the right. temple of Al Mecca is not really in Mecca. That Mecca, the name now, is a copy of the real temple which is in Yemen. And the city still exists, Mecca. It exists exactly. The temple is still there. I mean, there is not not only of it, but uh, it's a very famous temple. And not only that, for centuries, the scholars or the 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 the, uh, the scholars who do history and uh, dig in the ground, and they thought that this temple was for the sun god. And lately, they have to come to the conclusion because they were able to read the the text they were, they found, the tablets they found, confirming that this is, was the temple of the Lah, the moon god, Lah. So they brought those stones from that temple and they copy, and they call Mecca, Mecca as a copy of that temple. So people would not go and do Hajj all the way to Yemen, come here and touch the stones. We have the stones here. Those are stones coming from the temple of Al-Mecca. Yes, I was, I was always angry at stones. I, I never liked the idea of stone touching. Yeah, no, uh, Muhammad, he said that uh, uh, the black stone and the Yemeni corner, whoever touched them, it erased his sin. That's yes. why you see those poor people, they are coming from around the world. You will see a person coming from Indonesia. I mean, how much money Indonesian farmer he make, you know? Too much money uh, wasted and, and yeah, a lot of uh, He spent all his life saving to do what? To make the Saudi rich. Absolutely. Because he and all spent the all his well, money. The airline, they will make money, you know, and Saudi Arabia will take a percentage from it. They will spend money for hotel, they will spend money for food, they will buy gifts for their family, you know, like, you know, you know, like when the Hajji is coming back, you have to bring, you know, gift for everybody from, you know, and the water of Zamzam and Miswak. And, oh my uh, God, you know. that as well. It made me sick when I was a child. Oh my God. And they, they, they keep pushing it in your mouth as if it's the cure for everything. And I, yeah. I got sick. Actually, according to the BBC, they found that the the Zamzam have arsenic poison in it. I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt that because yeah. I, I want but, to, but to, let us focus me and you. You see, uh, as you see, this is a very clear pagan cult. The name there, I'm not against the name, by the way. What if the Muslim they change the name and they make it Jesus? Still, Islam is false. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm not sure. I'm not against Islam because of a name. What if the name of their God is Yahweh? Still, Islam is false. You see, as an example, we have uh, people, they call themselves uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't know if you heard of them. Yeah, they okay. visit sometimes. Jehovah's Witnesses, they agree with the name of Yeshua. They agree with the name of uh, God. They agree, etc. But for us, they are no Christian. They are not. They have the same name, you see. Now, now we have an example. People have the same exact name. What about the Mormon? The Mormon, they have the same exact name for God too. So, but still, they are a Christian. So, for us, we don't care for the name, because any cult can use the name of the true God to make you deceived. So, but in Islam, the name is not the same. The value is not the same. The ethic is not the same. The nature of God is not the same. Our God is a spirit. Their God is not. Our God can be a man, and He came as a man. Even the Bible says God created Adam in His image. The Muslim, they reject that. Islam teach that God, if you don't commit sin, he will destroy you. Our God teach, if you commit sin, he will be destroyed. Islam says, you can, you know, you can lie to your wife, you can lie to your husband, you can lie to, in three cases, in, in Christianity, Jesus says, either you say, yea, yea, or nay, nay, you are not even allowed to take an oath. In Islam, you can take a false oath, you can lie, take a false oath using the name of God in vain. So, yes. so Islam is proven to be satanic, and with the Christ, you are with God. So how, how we recognize God as a Christ? We don't recognize because Jesus will come and he say, I'm Jesus. Satan can do that. But we will recognize Jesus because he will do what Jesus does. You know what I mean? 
-hmm. And what Jesus does is what nobody can do. He is the best in ethic, in love, in mercy, in everything, and he can do miracle nobody can do. And he don't ask for himself. He don't ask for a privilege. You see, Jesus, it's not a secret. All the Christians since the time of Jesus, they worship him, correct? That's right. And if you are a person who's been worshipped, literally, can you imagine how much you can control your followers? Can you imagine Jesus who can raise people from death? How many kings they would love to give all their money and to bring them back to life? Yeah. How much Jesus' money can have, how much power he can have, from such a power he has. If I am the person now, I can make blind people see how much money I will earn a day. Yeah, I don't think he was after that, though. I will find hundreds of thousands every day in front of my house because I just touch their eyes and they can see. So Jesus have a power nobody can have yet. I don't know if you know the story. Jesus, he ordered his disciples. If you don't let me wash your feet, you don't belong to me. So this is the person who we worship. What he is doing? He said to us, the master is the servant. The one who want to be a master, he should be a servant first. So because he have an extreme love, we worship him. He is the son of God. He is God in earth. Yet he wore, you know, he washed our feet. And this is how you know who is Jesus. It's not by the name. That's why Jesus said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And I want you to use this in everything in your life. Anything. With your friends, with your family, with the business. You want to know a person? It's not by what he say. It's not by what he claims. Not how he dress. Not how rich. Not how poor. You will know them by their fruits. Absolutely. And that is God, my friend. God is fruits. And the fruit of Jesus is so clear. So when I say to you, I invite you to accept Jesus as your savior, I'm asking you not only to accept his, the person as a name, I'm ask, asking you to accept the person as a fruit. The true God, you have a true fruit. And how we I know believe him? I've always, I believe I've always believed in the true God, the God of Abraham, Moses, Jacob. Then you have to believe in Jesus. They asked Jesus, you know, when Jesus, he said, they said to him, uh, uh, he, uh, you know, like he said to them, before Abraham, I am. The Jews, they looked at him and says, but you are not even 50 years old. And you claim yet that you are before Abraham? He said, truly, truly, I said to them, before Abraham, I am. And Abraham, he saw my day and he rejoiced. So he is the God of Abraham. He is the God of all mankind. He is the God who created us. And this is why he came to save us. You see, the Quran says, the reason I created a human being, human and genie, just to worship. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not, and he don't want worshippers. He want God, our Lord. He want children. He don't want us to be slaves. Like when you call me, you say to me, I hate to be slaves, right? And you hate to be a sex slave. Which, I don't want to be that. With Jesus, you are no slave. The Bible says, in you know, with uh, 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 talking about Christianity, that there is no Greek, there is no Hebrew, there is no free, there is no slave.